I have a question that in all the years of me doing content creation, I never thought I would have to ask because why would I have to ask something like this? It should be common knowledge that actions have consequences. And when you are dumb enough to do something like this into the public eye, of course, the public perception will impact what you do in your daily life because we have countless examples of it. But I'm going to ask it anyway. Should your free speech be impacted because you as a a grown adult work for a corporation an entity or in this example a college and in your private life you do porn reactions from the lacrosse community are pouring in today after the uw board of regents fired uw lacrosse chancellor joe gal for producing online pornography with his wife news a now's allison Fergit joins us live from uwl's campus with the latest good evening allison Ken, Joe Gao says the board is overreacting and he may take legal action. But a First Amendment expert says that strategy may not save his job. Well, it's kind of kind of conduct unbecoming of someone in that position, I'd imagine, though. Joe Gao and his wife appear in videos on porn websites using the name Sexy Happy Couple. The two also have a YouTube channel called Sexy Healthy Cooking, where they cook meals with adult film actors. The board, you know, did made their decision based upon what they know and what they view the university. And if they feel that's right, then I'd, have to, I'd stand behind them with that. Others are rallying around Gao, saying he's done nothing illegal and was wrongfully terminated. There's even a petition for Gao to be reinstated as chancellor. Gao himself has defended his actions, saying they're protected by the First Amendment. Gao confirmed to a Milwaukee radio show this morning that he's considering all his legal options. It's a bit complicated. Legal expert and UW-Madison professor Howard Schwaber says the case is unique because of Gao's efforts to keep it separate from his job as chancellor. The chancellor is quite right that the activity he's engaged in is First Amendment protected expression. The question becomes, essentially, is there a legitimate basis for the proposition that if the public becomes aware of his activities, that alone is enough to disrupt his ability to be effective as chancellor? I think the answer might be yes. Schwaber says if Gao was a faculty member, the case is entirely different. But because he's a chancellor, a role that's public facing and serves at the will of the regents, the board could have a legitimate argument for his termination. So the, the regents would have to justify their action in terms of some threat to his ability to carry out his duties as chancellor. But I think a court might find that threat to be real. I'll be speaking with Joe Gao tonight. We will have that interview posted on our website, news8000.com. I struggle to understand how I'm to take someone seriously whose job has been impacted because in their private life, they have been exposed for doing something that if it was known about publicly, they wouldn't be working for any organization publicly. I do understand that people will hold the opinion that your private life should not affect your public business life and how you operate amongst the common folk that are not inside of your sex dungeon. But understand, once that is found out by people who work with you or there's somebody who's a little bit horny and they decide to look for something risque and they end up seeing their co-worker of course they're going to have the secret conversations with the other co-workers and then it becomes a public thing to where you will have to face judgment from your peers and your supervisors about what you're doing privately and in case anybody doesn't yet understand this businesses colleges and all forms of entities that are powerful and are to the public eye do not want to have anything embarrassing them and if they do they're going to get rid of it so that they can maintain that perfect image of being a place where nothing weird happens at all and yes someone who is a what professor scholar whatever it was being someone who does porn on the side yes will be something that a college does not want as part of their history, as a part of their group, as a part of their faculty. It's smart upon them that they got rid of this guy after finding this out. And I believe it is the basic consequence of your actions of doing something and making a little bit of money on the side. I'm not infringing upon your right to do whatever you want. I'm just saying when you do these things, your public perception and the way people look at you will take a hit because while you have this upstanding citizen over here who doesn't do OnlyFans, you have the person who we all believe to be an upstanding citizen getting bent over by four women and getting pegged at the same time. 
obviously one of these two people is going to get looked at more favorably while the other one gets a little bit of criticism and it's understandable will it be unfair to some people but that's the risk people take to gain when they want to do things like this. I would love to know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you do a little bit of strange for some change on the side? Do you have a job where you are respected and understood and tolerated as an upstanding individual while you secretly do things that are naughty? Or are you one of these people that likes to gossip once you found your mother's OnlyFans? Subscribe to the channel. I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.